A dramatic crash on the final lap of the Daytona 500 as Ryan Newman's car hits the wall, then goes airborne. We'll have an update on his condition. We have some cold nights and warm days ahead of us, plus a nice stretch of dry weather. And coming up, I'll tell you what you can look for in the night sky. Democratic candidate for president Bernie Sanders held a campaign rally in Tacoma tonight ahead of the state's March 5th primary. His message to supporters. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Fresh off his victory in New Hampshire, Senator Bernie Sanders turned his attention to Washington. The Democratic candidate for president held a rally in Tacoma tonight. This was Sanders' first 2020 campaign appearance in Washington state. Before the rally began, Sanders sat down with our sister station in Seattle. Among the things he addressed, Amazon's Jeff Bezos' $10 billion pledge to fight climate change. Well, Jeff Bezos is the wealthiest person in America. Amazon last year did not pay a nickel in federal income tax after making $11 billion in profit. And I'm glad that Mr. Bezos, as many of us are, is concerned about climate change. During the rally, Sandy Sanders rather fired up the crowd. He declared that President Donald Trump should be nervous about his early success in the presidential race. He also took a sharp aim at rival former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Sanders stated that Bloomberg was not going to buy this election, hitting at the ex-mayor's multi-million dollar spending spree on advertising. Sanders has emerged as the Democratic frontrunner with his win in the New Hampshire primary. The remaining five Democratic candidates will debate on Wednesday in Las Vegas. And speaking of, Senator Elizabeth Warren will be campaigning in Seattle on Saturday. She is hosting an event at the Seattle Center Armory at 6. Washington State's presidential primary is coming up on March 10th this year. Well, this is video of a helicopter taking off from a Spokane Valley man's private property. His neighbors say it's too loud and not safe for the area. So now Spokane County is preparing to file a lawsuit against the owner of the helipad. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley spoke with those neighbors earlier today. Today we spoke to one resident on Shawnee Drive in Spokane Valley. They said they moved to this area because of the beautiful trees and landscape and wildlife they get to see here, along with the quiet. But that's all changed now that their neighbor built a hangar and now uses a helicopter on their private property. Neighbors here in this close-knit neighborhood say they are just concerned for everyone's safety. Carl Strode moved to the Painted Hills neighborhood three years ago. He says in 2017, his next door neighbor, Jim Charbonneau, took out several trees to build a helipad. When he first mentioned to us he was getting ready to build a heliport and fly helicopters out of our neighborhood, we asked him, I says, is that legal here? He, he says, of course it is. By 2018, Strode and his wife, Dana, saw the first helicopter fly onto Charbonneau's property. Strode shot this video from his backyard. It is a big safety concern. Here in this neighborhood, we've got a pretty large fire hazard because of lots of the trees. According to an online records database, Charbonneau owns two helicopters. Those records also indicate he only has his student pilot's license as of April 2019. It's scary because we think any day, if I owned two helicopters and uh, I had them right next to my house, I would imagine that I'd be tempted to fly them. A notice from the Federal Aviation Administration dated October 19, 2018, identified Charbonneau's use of the helipad as objectionable. The FAA said its aeronautical study determined the proposed private use of the helipad would have a substantial adverse effect on the safe and efficient use of airspace and safety of people and property in the area. It adds the heliport is in a congested residential neighborhood with hillside homes and forested areas. Last week, Spokane County commissioners approved a resolution authorizing the filing of a lawsuit against Charbonneau. It says an active heliport within a low-density residential zone presents a significant risk to lives and property with those located within the community. Now, the county warned Charbonneau in October last year it would seek legal action if he continued to use his property as a heliport. 
while we were in the neighborhood, we did stop by Jim Charbonneau's home. We wanted to ask him about his helicopter and the hangar on his property. We stopped by twice and knocked on the door, but he never came to the door. Reporting in Spokane Valley, Amanda Rowley, CREM 2 News. All right, weather is starting to kind of feel like spring around the Inland Northwest. It's been beautiful lately. The question now, though, will that sunshine stick around? Let's get straight to meteorologist Thomas Patrick for the answer, Thomas. So far, so good, especially the last week and a half or so, starting off this week with a whole lot of sunshine. It's pretty much where we picked off last week, and thankfully we are not starting this week with a whole lot of snow on the ground. So really a nice weather pattern, all thanks to that high pressure area just off to our west. It's keeping things calm and pleasant, giving us lots of sunshine. Well, I think a few cumulus clouds that did spit out a little light precipitation, including some grapple, but not really anything noteworthy from earlier today. A sunny start for tomorrow morning, if not a little bit on the cold side, down to about 23 degrees right around sunrise, which is now before 7 a.m. The high is still in the 40s in most locations. And up this upcoming week, we'll continue to warm things up day by day, so hopefully we'll keep the sunshine day by day as well. An overall calm weather pattern. But coming up, checking out this upcoming weekend's weather, as well as what you can see in the night sky tonight since the weather is clear. So I have that coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. One person and their two dogs were rescued from a steep hillside in Tacoma today. This is aerial footage of that rescue. A technical rescue team set up a rope system for the descent in the area of Point Defiance Park. There was no word as to how long they've been stuck there for or how they became stuck. So far, no reports of injuries to the person or to the dogs. Nearly a month after fire destroyed several businesses in downtown Coeur d'Alene, business owners were finally allowed to re-enter their buildings. These are photos from Schmidt's Burgers. Their equipment and most of their belongings were damaged in the flames, but what did survive the fire was the first dollar they ever earned there, along with some cash in a safe. It was, it was really wet and frozen and charred a little bit, and it, it smells like a campfire. Authorities are still looking into how the fire started. The investigation had already been delayed once due to logistical challenges. Now, Schmidt says they're already planning to reopen somewhere new in Coeur d'Alene. They haven't announced where just yet, but they hope to start work at a new location, they say, in May. An incident at the Spokane Intermodal Center has now led to a federal lawsuit against the U.S. government. Comedian Mohanad El Sheke is accusing Border Patrol of false arrest for pulling him off a Greyhound bus and demanding papers. It is part of a regular and somewhat controversial practice by Border Patrol, but the lawsuit argues it was an illegal act of racial profiling. Our political reporter Casey Decker has more on that story. After performing a comedy show at WSU, Mohanad El Sheikh was on a bus about to head for Portland. Border Patrol agents then boarded and began questioning passengers. But El Sheikh says they did so selectively. In particular, he says they talked to three people who looked Hispanic and him. The suit says he does not recall them questioning any white people. Mohanad El Sheikh is a comedian who was last year based in Portland but has since moved to New York. He's originally from Libya. He came to America on a student visa. But according to the suit, once civil war broke out in Libya, quote, El Sheikh was notified that people were looking for him in Libya, had raided his room, and were searching for documents to prove his allegiance to one of the warring factions. He applied for and got asylum in the U.S. Once Border Patrol learned that he was a Libyan national, agents asked El Sheikh for documents. He showed them an Oregon driver's license and a work permit. But Border Patrol says that's not enough, that asylees need to carry their approval document. Eventually, El Sheikh was allowed back on the bus. The lawsuit just filed says agents behaved aggressively and illegally. Quote, CBP agents used displays of force and authority to ensure that Mr. El Sheikh did not feel free to leave. The agents did so without a warrant, probable cause, or reasonable suspicion. It accuses Border Patrol of false arrest and false imprisonment. CBP has historically claimed the law allows them to conduct this sort of questioning within 100 miles of the border, and Spokane just makes that cut. The suit describes the experience as traumatizing, with agents accusing El Sheikh of being an illegal, faking documents, and him fearing deportation back to Libya. It claims a variety of damages from loss of liberty to emotional distress to economic loss, saying El Sheikh had to cancel 
cancel shows because of the trauma, which brought back PTSD symptoms and recurring nightmares. Border Patrol provided a statement that reads in part, quote, Agents acted in accordance with current U.S. immigration laws and within their authority. It says that taking El Sheikhi off the bus was a common practice to protect his privacy. That, quote, it only took a fraction of the 20 minutes the suit claims and that the bus was not delayed as was alleged. That was Casey Decker reporting. Amazon has now posted a total of 23 job listings for their Spokane Fulfillment Center on its website. The company had more than 37,000 job listings worldwide on that website just last week. An Amazon spokesperson said today he could not provide a timeline for when employees would begin to work, adding that the positions will stay open until they're filled. Still no word yet on an opening date for the Fulfillment Center, but they say that center is expected to create more than 1,500 full-time jobs. Still ahead tonight, a dramatic crash on the final lap of the Daytona 500. Details coming up after the break.